Since Roman times, 14 villages along the Holderness coast have been taken by the sea. People here know they can't stop the erosion altogether, but by building and maintaining defences, they can slow it down. But creating and repairing defences is extremely expensive, and having them also affects the speed of erosion along other parts of the coast. Every community here wants their homes and businesses to be safe, but deciding who gets help is a very hot topic. Mike Needley used to keep pigs and other animals, but when his piggery fell into the sea, he decided it simply wasn't worth building another one, so instead he's diversified into selling bottled gas. And the storage yard where he keeps the bottles is actually his old front garden. We moved about 10 years ago. We, um, we just simply relocated, built a new house, a new grain store, 300 years away from the sea. Unfortunately for Mike and his family, the economic benefits of protecting the coastal fringe of their farm are less than the costs of building defences. And under the current system, that means they don't get any help at all. No, the government don't help at all. Not, nothing at all. If we could get just even tax allowance for the amount of land that we lost every year, that would be something, but we can't even claim that. And um, at, at present prices around here, um, farmland's making about five to five and a half thousand pound an acre, and we're losing over an acre a year. Under the 1949 Coast Protection Act, local authorities have to decide which parts of the coast they want to protect and which ones to leave to erode naturally. They usually base their decisions on cost-benefit analysis. In other words, somewhere gets defended if the economic benefits outweigh the costs. In Holderness, that's meant building and maintaining defences in front of the three main population centres of Bridlington, Withensea and Hornsea. These are timber groins which are the simplest um, forms of coastal engineering that we employ. They are basically uh, timber piles, timber posts which are driven into the, uh, into the clay and then there are boards in between. So they're an extremely effective means of trapping the sand between the groins which then keeps it in position to protect the base of the sea walls which are here. Groins like these ones at Withensea were first installed about 150 years ago. They work by preventing longshore drift from carrying sand down the coast, building up a beach that helps to absorb the sea's energy, reducing erosion of the coastline behind. But groins aren't enough to protect the coast during storms or very high tides, so sea walls have often been used as well. But recent research suggests that these walls reflect or even increase wave energy, which can scour away at the foot of the wall. Nowadays, revetments are built from resistant boulders, with large surface areas designed to absorb all the wave energy. But they don't just use sea defences to protect areas of population. This is the village of Mappleton, population just 249. Like many villages along the coast, Mappleton has felt the full force of the erosional impact of the sea. In the 40 or so years that he's lived here, George Motley has seen 75 metres of his garden disappear. Well, this fence was about oh, 20 yards further out. And beyond that was, uh, oh, I would say, a good 60 yards of uh, arable land. And uh, as I say, he used to plough and plant it, and it went very rapidly. But unlike some of the larger villages nearby, Mappleton now has its own sea defences, and this is the reason why. At its closest point, the main road is just 34 metres from the sea, and the council say it was cheaper to build defences than move the road. But round here, lots of people say the other reason Mappleton's defended was sheer determination. When they first got the plans sorted out, they went to the 
Ministry at York for approval. All the villages wrote and badgered that department. They moved to the next department to get rid of it. And we badgered that department with, with letters. And also, <laughs> then when it got to Parliament, whichever department it went through in the Parliament, we sent loads of letters. And so everybody who got fed up with it, so they hurriedly saw to it and sent it on to the next person until we eventually got it done in quick time, really. Built in 1991 at a cost of £1.9 million, the project used 60,000 tonnes of granite to create a boulder wall or revetment at the base of the cliff and two large groins to prevent longshore drift and keep the sand in place, creating a beach and a new sense of community. Building the defences didn't just protect the road. It also gave local businesses like the garage the confidence to invest and develop. Well, back, back in late 80s, early 90s, when before we had all the work done, it was a little bit uh, questionable whether in maybe 20 years' time we'd have a main road through the village. If we didn't have a main road, we didn't have a business because we'd have no cars through. So it was a, you know, it was a really good good thing to uh, get the coastal protection done. It gives us more confidence, you know, since, since 90 we've still kept in business and we've grown the business. So, you know, which is, which is a great thing. Today, Graham Burton's garage employs around 20 people, providing important jobs in the village. But it's not just businesses that have benefited from the sea defences. Thanks to the groins, Mappleton's become a popular leisure beach attracting tourists, fishermen and new residents. And because the sea defences guarantee the future of the village for at least 50 years, anyone wanting to move here can now get a mortgage. It wasn't really until we, we showed an interest in this house and uh, to apply for a mortgage that we then came to realise, oh, we might not get a mortgage. And that made us sort of think, well, we'll stick with this and see how far we go. Um, but it opened our minds as to sort of how some areas people are going to struggle and, and not get one. Um, we knew that the sea defences had been done, but we were still worried about how long they would last and, and would, would the mortgage company recognise the effect of it. Um, and of course we did, and it's fantastic. Uh, it makes a big difference. But sustaining communities is rarely the main reason for building defences. And Mappleton isn't the only small village where infrastructure makes protection cost-effective. 25% of the nation's gas comes in through Easington. Uh, last year saw the beginning of a 50-year 50 uh, 50 delivery of Norwegian gas from the second biggest gas field in the North Sea called Orman Langer. And uh, without that gas, um, Great Britain would uh, probably have a, uh, a problem with its energy supplies. Um, so Easington has a, a lot of protection around it. The groins and revetments at Easington should protect gas supplies for the next 50 years. But whatever the reason, building hard defences causes more erosion at the point they run out. Those rocks there in 91 were touching the cliff. Now if you can see over the rocks, that's uh, 17 years. Now look how far the council bought that land because the new south of a, a groin like this, it would whack the coast. But look in 17 years what it's done here. Despite the increased erosion to the south of the defences, some people in Mappleton would like to see the whole of the Holderness coast defended. But for coastal engineers like Mike Ball, that would not only be expensive, but could cause millions of people to be more susceptible to flooding. The Humber estuary is important because um, it's a massive watercourse. It drains about a seventh of all the rivers in, the, in England, I think. And uh, the sediment that comes off our coast, end, a lot of it ends up in the, in, in the Humber, in the bed of the Humber. And, and that is needed to maintain this um, environmental balance and without this material, that environmental balance will be severely affected and that could then, from a sustainability point of view, throw the problems that the people have here on the coast to the problems people will have inland with increased flooding due to a deeper river going further inland. Uh, and likewise on the beaches down in Lincolnshire, they rely on this material 
to safeguard their communities because without this material and down there it is soft engineering by and large you have these dunes which protect the communities in the in the land behind um, without this material those communities would flood so it's extremely important it's a sacrificial coastline maintaining defenses is also expensive and each year costs East Riding Council around £200,000. But with increased erosion either side of the defended areas, each year they end up jutting further and further out into the sea, making them more expensive to keep intact. And increasingly, building and maintaining defences isn't seen as a long-term strategy. Increasingly, over the next few decades say into a, the next hundred years this coastline behind me will go back three four hundred meters so increasingly these these coastal towns will become promontories which could be a real problem with sea level rise and and climate change over that period they're going to get deeper waters there's going to be more wave attack on these promontories and then the question will have to be asked is it going to be sustainable to continue to maintain these defenses or in a hundred years time, say, will we have to roll communities back inland?